Okay, welcome to our very first example on buoyancy. So we've been studying buoyancy for a little bit now, and we know that buoyancy is really equal to the weight of the fluid displaced acting upon an object. So in this example, we have a cylinder, a, a cylinder that is floating inside of a body of water, and it is perpendicular to the leveled surface of the water. And what's interesting about this cylinder is that it is not fully submerged inside of the water. So the level of water, the water surface is right there, and only five centimeters of this cylinder is submerged within the body of the fluid, and two centimeters is sticking out above the surface line. So we're given this mass density of the water that the cylinder is submerged in, and the question asks, what is the mass density of the cylinder? Simply, what is the mass density of this cylinder that is submerged inside of this body of water? So as with most problems, I think a good place to start would be the free body diagram of the cylinder. So over here, I'm gonna represent the cylinder as this point mass, and we know that there's a few forces acting on this point mass. Number one is the actual weight of the cylinder itself, which is pointing down, and I'm just gonna call that F sub G. And then we also have the buoyant force of the water pushing up against the cylinder, and that is going up, and I'm going to call that F sub B for buoyant force. So again, F sub G is simply the weight of this entire cylinder, and F sub B is the buoyant force of the amount of displaced water acting on this cylinder. So it's not going to be the amount of the actual cylinder itself, but it's going to be however much of the cylinder is being submerged underneath the surface of the water. And that's a very important concept to know. Remember, buoyant force is the force of the displaced liquid and not of the actual object uh, that is submerged within that liquid or fluid. So we can go ahead and start calculating these two forces, and we know that this cylinder is in static equilibrium. So if we were to take this free body diagram and sum the forces, in this case, in the y direction, the up and down direction, we would know that the magnitude of F sub B should equal F sub G, right? Because this entire cylinder is in static equil equilibrium. Okay, so what is, let's start with F sub B. So the buoyant force, what is the magnitude of the buoyant force? Well, again, that is really equal to the weight of the water in this case, right? The weight of the fluid that is displaced or the liquid that is displaced. And we know that weight is equal to uh, the mass density of the water, the volume of the water that is displaced times our gravitational constant. So remember, mass density times volume gives us mass, and then mass times gravity gives us weight or a force. Okay, awesome. So what about F sub G? So the weight of the actual cylinder itself. So that is just gonna be equal to the mass of the cylinder times gravity, and the mass is the mass density of the cylinder times the volume of the cylinder times the gravitational constant. So again, a very important distinction between the two different volumes being used in these two equations. In the buoyant force equation, the volume of water is the amount of displaced water. It's not of the entire cylinder. Whereas F sub G is the volume of the entire object, right? Because the entire object is causing some sort of F sub G for some sort of weight. But for the buoyant force, it's simply the volume of water that is displaced. Okay, so what are those two volumes? I think that would be a good thing to calculate next, right? V sub water and V sub cylinder. So I'm gonna do that down here, and I'm gonna start with the volume of water. So the volume of water that is displaced, well, this is a cylinder, and we know that the area or the volume of a cylinder is the area times its depth. So the area is pi r squared, and the depth is whatever d is. So the volume of water displaced is equal to pi times r squared times the depth. 
In this case, the depth is only five centimeters because that's how much of the cylinder is beneath the water. So that's how much water gets displaced. So that depth is five centimeters. And because we're gonna use this in standard units, I'm gonna go ahead and convert that five centimeters to meters. So this is gonna equal pi r squared times 0 0.05 meters, right? I just took centimeters and I divided it by 100 to get meters. Okay, so what about the volume of the cylinder? So that uh, variable right there. So the volume of the cylinder is going to be the same thing essentially, pi r squared times the depth. The depth in this case is the entire cylinder, right? We want the volume of the entire cylinder because the entire cylinder is contributing to its weight. It's contributing to this F sub G force. So that depth is seven centimeters. And again, I'm just gonna convert this to consistent units. Uh, this is going to be 0.07 meters, right? Seven divided by 100 is 0 0.07. Okay, awesome. So we have volume of water, we have volume cylinder, so we have these two knowns. Now we also have the density, uh, the mass density of water. It's given right here as 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And based off of this equation, we can actually set this equation equal to this equation. So that's what I'm going to do down here. I'm gonna set F sub B equal to F sub G. And F sub B is again, the mass density of water times the volume of water times the gravitational constant. And that is equal to F sub G, which is mass times gravity of the cylinder. And that is the mass density of the cylinder times the volume of the cylinder times the gravitational constant. And immediately you can see that the gravitational constants on both sides of the equations cancel out. So that's good. We like simplifying things. And now we can plug in a few things here. So we have the mass density of the water. We have the volume of the water. We have the volume of the cylinder. We can take all three of those things and plug them into this equation right here. So that's what I'm going to do. And the mass density of water, rho sub w, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times the volume of the water, which was pi r squared times 0 0.05 meters. And that's equal to the mass density of the cylinder. And again, that is our unknown. So this is what we're trying to find, the mass density of the cylinder. And that times the volume of the cylinder, and the volume of the cylinder is right there. And that is equal to pi r squared times 0 0.07 meters. And again, we have more terms canceling out. So we have pi canceling out from both sides. We have this r squared canceling out from both sides. And if I scroll down a little bit to right or get some more space, we can simplify this equation even further. So on the left-hand side, we have 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 0 0.05 meters. And that's equal to the mass density of the cylinder times 0 0.07 meters. So on the left-hand side, 1,000 times 0 0.05 is 50 kilograms per meter squared, right? Because we have this meter canceling out with one of the meters for the mass density. And that is equal to the mass density of the cylinder times 0 0.07 meters. So now we can divide both sides by that 0 0.07 meters, 0 0.07 meters and then this will cancel out. And on the right side, we'll just be left with the mass density of the cylinder. And on the right side, we'll end up with about 714.28 kilograms per meter cubed. And that's equal to the mass density of the cylinder. So there we go, we figured it out. The mass density of this partially submerged cylinder is about 714 kilograms per meter cubed.